So we were discussing macular atrophy, which is a big problem in neovascular AMD, given that a lot of retina specialists, when they treat their patients, they need to figure out whether they should give more or less anti-VEGF treatments, because there is a lot of concern right now whether these medications would cause atrophy for their patients or not. The short answer for that would be that we don't really know yet because we still need to have large prospective trials that are powered specifically to answer these sort of questions. But so far that the study we have completed actually says that there is no effect of the anti-VEGF therapy on macular atrophy in these patients. However, the evidence is still unclear on that. There are mainly three different reasons that are possibly causing macular atrophy, one of which is probably it's the dry AMD process happening underlying the CMV, and that's causing the atrophy. Maybe the atrophy is caused by the scarring that happens after the CMV membrane gets dried with time and with treatment. Or the third possibility that it might be the uh, medication causing the atrophy effect, and that's something independent of the CMV process itself. We wanted to know whether if the anti-VEGF therapy, and namely ranibizumab, is the drug that we tested, would actually influence the development or the progression of macular atrophy in these patients. So what we did is that we had 60 patients, and we compared the study eyes that received the medication to the fellow eyes that did not receive any medication, and we checked to see what kind of atrophy would develop with time and how fast it would progress and the char characteristics at baseline that may predict this uh, atrophy. Well, what we found was very interesting is that the atrophy at baseline was quite a common occurrence. About 40% of the cases had atrophy before starting any kind of treatment. So it was part of the natural process. But at the same time, when we followed these patients up for 18 months, we found that the rates of atrophy development were higher in the patients who are getting monthly medication doses. And we found that the atrophy progression rates or the speed of the atrophy exacerbation was quite similar among across the three groups, the monthly, the TREX, and the control groups. So that says that perhaps if the study is not underpowered, is that the anti-VEGF therapy or the ranibizumab does not have any effect on the macular atrophy progression, but it might be having an effect on the atrophy development, which means that it would create atrophy if patient doesn't have it, but it doesn't really affect the progression. That's just like one of the evidences that's available. We published a study before that we um, had it in retina three months ago that was saying on a different cohort of patients that the more injections you get, the more atrophy you get, what means that faster progression of atrophy, but it doesn't create new atrophy in these patients. But now, on this study that we just presented, it says that the atrophy might be more as a new occurrence in patients who are getting monthly medications. So we think that still there's a lot of more into the story. It's a lot more complicated than just the simple effect of the drug on the atrophy itself. Actually, we are now targeting this question. We're analyzing the harbor data set using the latest multimodal imaging techniques so that we can figure out the answer to the question. And we really want to know what would be the difference if you provide a patient with the highest dose possible of ranibizumab versus the lowest dose versus no ranibizumab at all. Would that cause any change or would it influence positively or negatively the atrophy process itself? And we will have a good control group, which is the fellow eyes who are not getting any treatment. And that will hopefully give us a better insight. Still, the best possible trial to answer that would be a prospective trial powered specifically for the atrophy question. There are three famous anti-VEGF medications, bevacizumab, ranibizumab, and aflibercept. In the study that we published in Retina three months ago, it was patients that got the three medications, 
they got all these medications along their follow-ups. So that's possibly also another question to answer, which of these medications influence the atrophy more or less. But the, larger, the largest trials available so far are the Harbor trial, the, the one we're analyzing, and the TREX trial, and both of them are utilizing ranibizumab on the patients. The effect of macular atrophy is that it's a major problem that is causing declination of vision. Then the patients will actually be suffering from the new vascular problem and the atrophy problem at the same time. And the retina specialists are now thinking, okay, if we treat the corneal, the corneal new vascularization more, we will probably be trading the problem of corneal new vascularization with the problem of atrophy because nobody knows yet if the anti vegf therapy actually does that as a side effect. The other physicians today, when they heard about that, it was still the process we are waiting for, which is the data is still pending. We need to know more about that in the larger clinical studies. A lot of the concerns and the criticisms of today were that what, what, what if the sample size was not enough? And that's a very legitimate question because we still need a lot more patients. Probably we were underpowered to detect small effect and small difference between the different groups. So that's one of the criticisms. The other criticisms were what would be the effect of um, looking into patients that received different anti-VEGF agents and that's also something that we are going to under, um, undertake and uh, investigate in the future. Well, the future of our research is that we would know which medication or anti-VEGF me therapy would actually influence the atrophy. And if we know that, we will end up with new guidelines, whether which anti-VEGF and which dosing regimen is the best one for avoiding macular atrophy or at least treating the CMV part but not affecting the atrophy part. And once we get that, I think that we will be like, achieving a great milestone in the treatment of the new vascular AMD.